surface with Bob. Welcome everybody to Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by the PTO, the Pro Triathletes Organization, by Amp Human, Velo Fix, Norma Tech, Form Goggles, You Can, and our Challenged Athletes Foundation. We just sent out 3,921 grants, totaling $5.9 million to keep challenged athletes in the game of life through sport. One of our favorite athletes on the planet, Melissa Stockwell, joins us. Her new book, The Power of Choice, My Journey from Wounded Warrior to World Champion, sporting the Challenge Athlete Foundation logo. Melissa, how are you doing? I am good. It's so great to see your face. Great to hear your voice. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm pumped. You're, it's always such a joy to get to chat with you. So this has obviously been percolating for quite a while. You, you know, you... Uh, your, your injury goes back to, well, really, after 9-11 happened, was that the impetus for you going into the service? Um, so I, I was in ROTC when September 11th happened in college. I kind of joined. I love our country, wanted to give back. And when September 11th happened, senior year of college, I knew that there was a high probability that I would be sent over to war, over to Iraq, and that happened um two years later and or 2001 i guess in 2004 i was over in iraq and yeah ended up um losing my leg from a roadside bomb over in iraq and kind of starting this whole journey of finding a new normal and learning to live my life with with just one leg and then next thing you know this happens in 04 and 08 you're on the olympic the paralympic team uh, and yeah. how cool was that to be swimming in the paralympics so oh. so soon after Amazing. horrific injury. Amazing. Just being able to put on that USA uniform. I think, you know, in the military, you have your military uniform and you're defending this country that I love so much. And here I was at the Paralympic Games putting on, you know, a different but yet similar USA uniform and representing our country on the biggest athletic stage. So, I mean, the greatest honor for sure. And carrying the flag at the closing yes. ceremonies. Yes. The highlight of the 2008 Games. Absolutely. Carrying that flag. Uh, moment I'll never forget. So after the games, all of a sudden, paratriathlon becomes yeah. part of your life. Had you thought, hey, I'll just continue and swim for 2012? Or um, when you found out about paratriathlon, was that, I'm going to go there? No, I never thought. about. I thought triathletes were crazy because who like, wants to do all three sports at the same time? And, you know, it's funny. After 2008, I was um, um, 28 years old, and I thought I was old. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to retire, and here I am 40, like still going. But funny how that happens but no so after Beijing in 2008 and 2009 I got a call from I mean the Challenge Athletes Foundation from Nico with Operation Rebound and he said hey Melissa we have this event every October called San Diego Triathlon Challenge um, we have a group of wounded military and would you like to come out and do a triathlon and I thought you know what sure like I knew how to swim I had a bike I was learning to run came out to San Diego surrounded by hundreds of other athletes with disabilities, did my first triathlon, crossed that finish line there in La Jolla Cove. And I mean, it changed my life. Like being on the same course with able-bodied athletes, just the camaraderie of all the athletes, like crossing that finish line and realizing that, I mean, I was now a triathlete and kind of fell in love with the sports and continue continue, continue to compete on the national level, the world level. And eventually that brought me to Rio in 2016. Well, and meanwhile, you win gold, what, uh, 2010, 2011, 2012, so you do the best in the world. Yeah. yeah and you. then silver in 2013, bronze 2015, you go to the games, and it's the first time paratriathlon is yeah. in the Paralympics in 2016 yeah, in Rio. Yeah. And, and yeah, so, so, yeah, so debut year, paratriathlon, I was a long shot to make the team. I had my son, Dallas came back, made the team. Of all days, the race could have taken place. It was September 11th, so you can just imagine the meeting there. I got a bronze medal, felt like my personal gold. We had a USA sweep on September 11th. Not one, not two, but three American flags as we heard our national anthem. I mean, the, the emotion is there like it happened yesterday, and I think it will be forever, just the meaning behind all that. And uh, it was a, I mean, other than the birth of my kids, it was the proudest moment of my life. And um, I mean, just who would have thought, you know, it's just crazy the way that your life goes and kind of where you end up. So being there and, and taking photos of the three Americans on the podium, it was one of the coolest moments I've ever seen, especially happening on September 11th. 
that's a perfect drop the mic moment. All right. You're what at that point, you're like 36 years old yeah. and you're okay. We just, I did what I wanted to do. Dropping a mic first, first ever paratriathlon in the Paralympics. I get a bronze medal. We sweep. What, what can be better than that? Was there a point where you thought, okay, now I'm a mom and I got my two kids and I'm moving forward. When did you make that decision that, you know, maybe I'm not quite done yet. I can do this at 40. I know it's funny. I think like you talk to Paralympic athletes or Olympic athletes and they're like, yeah, I'm going to be done after this game. And then four years later, like they're still not done. Like, well, that was me. So after 2016, um, you know, I had this bronze medal. I was pregnant again. I had my daughter. So now I have two kids and I'm still trying to stay fit. Not quite sure yet if I'm going to go for 2020 and kind of after having my daughter a few months later, I thought, you know what? Like I still really enjoy this and my kids are still young enough where they don't really have anything of their own yet, like sports wise. So I can still do this. So if I still enjoy it, I'm still decent at it. And the timing is right. Why not give it a try to 2020? Not to mention I'd be 40. So let's show, you know, these, let's show all these younger athletes and an old mom and of two can still try to hang. So I decided to, to give it a shot and moved out, moved the whole family out to Colorado Springs to train at the Olympic Training Center and ended up permanently moving here, buying a house, starting a business. And obviously we all know the Paralympics are postponed to 2021, but still training and that's, that's still the goal. What was the lowest point for you, Melissa? You're, you're, you're really the first American woman, right? To be, to lose a limb in battle and you're, you're back home after that. And I always hear the hardest part of that is the fact that you're disconnected from all these people, your, your fraternity, your sorority of, of, uh, of troops. What was the hardest part for you getting back into society after the injury? Um, I think that that's definitely a part of it. I felt, I almost felt guilty because I was safely, granted I'm in Walter Reed in a hospital room, but I was safe. Like I, was going to wake up every morning and have these nurses attend to me. And it's almost like I felt guilty because my soldiers were still over there in, in harm's way. So that's definitely something to have to process and to deal with. And then the other part, the hardest part was like, I was, you would see these other soldiers ahead of you who were, they had their prosthetic legs. They were up, they were walking. And, you know, I had a lot of, you know, setbacks physically, a lot of, you know, surgeries, blood transfusions. So trying to, your, bo your mind is ready to be eight steps ahead, but your body's not ready yet. So you have to kind of wait for yourself to heal. So that's another challenging, was another challenging part. But I mean, when I look back, it's, um, I mean, my recovery was as good as it could have been. Putting a book together, it, yeah. it allows you to sort of go back through the scrapbooks and go back through the memory banks. And, and what was the biggest surprise for you when you started to put this book together? Um, it's been such a long process. I think the surprise was kind of going back and thinking about my childhood and how it kind of shaped me to be where I am today. Like, like the little things I didn't really think about, like, you know, when I'm f six years old, my parents gave, presented me with two bikes and I was, they let me choose which one. So like, and just, just kind of the, the full circle about how, you know, the power of choice starts so young and here I am with those bikes now riding a bike for a living. So it's just like kind of going back and kind of seeing how those things kind of come full circle to now. Was there a point when, because obviously in 2010, 11 and 12, you're dominating. And then it's, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a long shot to make the team here. Was there a point where you wondered, am I going to, am I going to be able to make this team? Oh, absolutely. I think, I think that's a natural thought. You know, I was coming back from having my son. I mean, even now the goal is 2021, but there, there's no guarantees. We haven't had try, we haven't had tryouts yet. Like the team, we haven't kind of solidified our spot yet for 2021. So I think all you can do is continue to train, trust in the training, like trust in the process. And if it's meant to be, it, it, it'll happen. And it's just, things just seem to seem to, keep happening that I have to pinch myself that they're actually happening. You know, the Beijing and then Rio, I mean, everything along the way, I just feel so fortunate to live the life that I do. And do you, are your kids at an age now where they get it, where they know what mommy does? Kind of, they know, like they'll ask every day, mommy, did you run today? Or did you swim today? Or, 
why are your hands callousy? Oh, you must have lifted weights today. Like, so they kind of know, um, they know that the Olympians and Paralympians are the best athletes in the world. So my son who is five, definitely more so than my three-year-old daughter, but they know that I work out a lot, I guess. <laughs> has, has Dallas brought you to school for show and tell yet? No, well, I did go and speak to a class um, and it was pretty great because he was kind of sitting in the front row like all, all years. And, um, and this book though, I don't know if we're going to chat about it, but the book, yes. when it came in the mail for the first day, he wouldn't let it go. Like for a week, he carried this book to school, from school. Like he was just so proud of it. And that made me such a proud mom just to see him holding the book. It was awesome. <laughs> he yeah. probably like, I'm so bummed schools. Now are you guys, will the kids be back in school or no? Uh, they will. Yep, they're in daycare now, but in a few weeks, they're still slotted to, to go to kindergarten in person. So we're doing it. Yeah. And you know he's going to bring that book to school. You know, I, I, I think he might. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where do you keep your bronze medal? Um, it's Kurt, Well, he used to travel with me wherever I went. And obviously, I haven't traveled much since March. So it's still kind of in my travel bag and like a little... Um, little cool wood container that it came in so it's always ready to show off if I need to. I love it. You must be the fittest 40 year old uh, at school. In the school. Um, I don't know about that maybe. No I'm sure there's others out there. Very sure. cool. <laughs> so Melissa your favorite CAF moment since you were at San Diego Triathlon Challenge. I see member photos of you with Robin Williams and yeah those were, those were some pretty cool days. Yeah a lot of moments and I think you know my some of my favorite moments are just the camaraderie between, you know, Operation Rebound, just these, we have, we've all gone through these circumstances that we never expected, these obstacles, and we've come together through the sport of triathlon. So just being there along the race course, cheering each other on. I mean, we all had, you know, power of choice. We all had the choice to overcome these obstacles, to get on that race course and to not let our disability define us. So it's those moments that, I mean, they'll stick with me forever. So if people want to get the book, Amazon.com, that's the easiest? Yeah. Yep, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, kind of any major bookseller. Um, yeah, it'd be, yeah, I would appreciate you taking a, a look and I'd love the feedback. People are going to love it. Again, the book is called The Power of Choice, My Journey from Wounded Warrior to World Champion. The great Melissa Stockwell joins us. Melissa, thank you so much for taking so much time. Always an honor. Thank you for everything you do for CAF. We really thank appreciate you. it. Well, you guys have done the same for me, so thank you. Well, Mr. Stockwell has been our guest, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. All right. See you later, Bob. Bye, Melissa.